Being an entrepreneur can be a lonely place. Most businesses don't even get past the first three years. So in this series, we're going to be talking to entrepreneurs that are high performing or high performing businesses that can help you with hints, tips and hacks to help you fast forward your way to success. My name is Mark Burgess. I've got over 20 years experience working as an entrepreneur, building up various different businesses. I've wrote a best-selling book. I speak nationally and internationally at different conferences. And this is Raising Your Game. On this episode of Raising Your Game, I talk to Mike Symes. Mike is the ex-head of marketing for the Bank of New York Financial, and he talks about what brand really means and how you build the essence of your company. Okay, Mike, so thanks very much for coming in today. Delighted to be on the show. Thank you. Um, so before we start digging into this, um, I'd like to give the viewers a bit of a background on the guest. Um, so are you all right just to give people uh, your story? Yeah, absolutely. So I've had a career-spanning experience in financial services, predominantly in marketing roles, and the main focus there has been to um, expand the brand of the organisations that I've been in um, and what I wanted to do after that having spoken to a, a number of my peers was actually create an agency that really makes a difference in terms of our clients ability to have an absolute purpose to really shine out in the marketplace um, and I had the great pleasure of um, being able to work with a number of guys in terms of producing something that is very very special. And that has manifested itself from my previous client side role as head of marketing for Bank of New York Financial to actually having an agency that specialises in building brands for financial organisations in terms of financial marketing, um, which is a, a micro niche in the sense of, of having financial marketing, but an inch wide and a mile deep. And also Brand Workshop, which is a very recent subsidiary um, of um, financial marketing that effectively is again niche but focused on brand so it's more horizontal positioning rather than the vertical positioning of financial so it works across a whole variety of businesses and looks to pr create brand strength and pr purpose. Okay so <clears throat> for a lot of entrepreneurs out there um, they might see their brand as their logo, for instance. Yes. Um, and even on, in financial services, people might think to themselves like, well, you know, if you're, I don't know, HSBC, what is there to do with your brand? So hmm. how, do you, how, how do you feel that uh, is the best way to explain brand? Yes, well, a client of ours actually came up with a very, very good explanation in terms of it being the face and soul of an organisation. Yes, it's about the corporate identity, the, the logo of the brand and the image associated with it, but it actually goes soul deep in terms of what's your purpose? What's your core essence, as we call it? So we're talking about if, if it was Disney Corporation, it would be something magical, as an experience that you actually have as a customer of that particular brand. If it was Harley Davidson, it would be liberating. So what would your word be? How do you distill what you have? And as Simon Sinek would say, what, what's your why down into one or two words to be able to really define and hone down what you do? And the more distilled it is, the more it's taken down to that stripped out level the more single-minded the proposition is and the more people can remember it and the more people resonate with it. Yeah. And do you, do you find that um, many of the companies that you work with or have worked with in the past sometimes struggle between their, their purpose and their why and just the service that they offer, if you like? Um, you know, in the sense of, I don't know, if you're a wedding planner, yes, um, they might just say... Oh, we're wedding planners. Exactly. And that's, that's the age-old issue that everybody seems to be focused on the what rather than the why. So they're focused on what they do, not necessarily the value that they bring or what they actually stand for. And the only way to stand for something in the market is to actually stand out by standing for something that matters to your clients. So we've got a saying that A is for audience, B is for brand. Always start with the audience. What do they want from you? What do they need from you? And how do you position some single-minded propositions, creating value propositions that map to that core essence that I spoke about earlier on? So you're kind of living your brand as opposed to 
just saying, well, we're a wedding planner. So what is that word? What is that phrase that actually makes that fundamental difference? Gary Hamill talks about having a cause, not just a business. Yeah. So what is your cause? What are you trying to create? If it's going to be around beauty, for example, in, in wedding planning business, how does every aspect of your customer experience relate to being beautiful? Mm. That's a, that's a really interesting way of looking at it, isn't it? Because, you know, many people, if we, if we stick with that analogy of a wedding planner, mm. you know, um, never having been one, I imagine that you mm. go somewhere with a brochure and you tell people what you can do for them and that it's going to be a great day. Mm. But it stems right back to, I guess, what you look like when you walk through the door. Do you look mm. beautiful? Mm. Does your brochure look beautiful? Yes. Does the things you get, does everything sing of this beautifulness yes. that leaves the person thinking... You know, you're and, gonna, they're going to have that experience. And there's a really lovely example of that. Um, Tom Peters, in search of excellence, um, he, he basically has spoken about um, a, a, an organisation called the Louisville Redbirds. And effectively, that was, that was a, a, a business that was um, effectively not going in the direction that everybody wanted. It wasn't uh, a winning baseball team at the time. And... He said, actually, let's put something completely different at the heart of the business, and that's great family entertainment. Right. It totally transformed their world. Wow. To, to be able to have amazing fireworks after, after games, to be able to have fantastic food, washrooms where you could actually change a baby's nappy, completely family orientated as opposed to just saying, we're a baseball team. They never just professed to be a baseball team. Right. They said it was all about great family entertainment. And what happens when you start living a brand is you start winning. You start winning in every single aspect because people took their entire families to the games. Gate receipts were absolutely great. More and more people starting to come to the games. And with that, of course, more revenue. You can buy great players. You can buy great kits. You can actually have more entertainment that actually inspires and energizes the families that are coming along. So you actually get that fantastic engagement with the brand. And it's absolutely bringing it to life. And the key thing and the message for entrepreneurs really here is that when you have a core brand essence, you map to it very tangible things that actually make a difference for your business. Mm. Um, in terms of a practical example of that, we work with a company called Groundshore. And what we did there was effectively say, um, with a, within a workshop environment, they created their own brand of saying, we're genuine pioneers and everything related to that. And so you actually had an organization that was completely dedicated, focused and energized around one thing yeah. rather than many. So if we take that baseball analogy, mm. um, how does a company even start with that? Because the, many people will have listened to that and think, like, that's, of course, that makes perfect sense. Mm. You know, the traditional sort of baseball fan goes to try to see his team win, but you could create something at the heart of a community that was just, as you mm. say, more about entertainment. Mm. But if you've got a failing baseball team that's got struggling revenues, how do you suddenly turn it into a family, you know, you can't suddenly click your fingers and turn it into Disneyland. So no. there's, I guess there's small, small steps that you have to take. It's, there are incremental gains throughout. And, and brand is a long-term play. That's one of the key things about branding. It's not just switch on a logo and the way in which your customer services team speaks to your customers changes overnight. Mm. It starts with a workshop in a safe space to really get to know what it is that you actually offer, the value that you're bringing into the world. And once you know what the value is, you can then articulate each and every part of it. And it might be a long-term game over 10 years, yeah. but the fact that you're moving towards something and you have this, rather than having a business that, that its only rudder is to make money, that you've got a cause behind it that you're continually playing to and continually building on, that's what makes a difference for brands. And that, that's what makes a difference to their revenues long term. Yeah. So once you've explained that to a, to a mm. company um, and they've, they've really embraced it and they thought like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a brilliant idea and they've had their workshop, what sort of um, roadblocks do you tend to find that crop up time and time again that you have to kind of help companies with? Um, what, one of the key things is creating a consistent environment 
where the internal staff and the principals of the business don't get bored with it. Right. So actually keeping it alive all the time. It's like anything else. It's like a, 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 a flower. You're continually nurturing it. You're feeding it. You're watering it. You're continually nurturing it. A brand is not something once created that's left alone. You've got to invest in it continually and it will repay you dividends yeah. all the time. So how do you, um, <clears throat> there's, if, let's say that you've, you've settled on your brand, you know mm. what you're going to do, you're going to, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to um, uh, bring beauty to wedding planning, yes. you're going to do that, so you're gonna, that's the road we're going to go down. And then I guess the boredom could kick in and you could think like, um, actually, we're going to bring beauty and ease to wedding plan, and, and then maybe it starts like you know drifting a bit. Yeah. Um, but by continually improving on it, like you say, how do you do that without uh, diluting it? Yeah, I mean that's the key. And the more stripped back we can be in our offering, the number of sales pitches that we all see, I'm sure, um, that are so benefits driven. You get 15 benefits thrown at you. The more you strip back to that core essence, the more you have that single-minded focus, the more powerfully it will land. Right. And it's a constant battle, if you like, to continually be thinking about, we need to stick to the knitting here. We need to stick to what we want to be famous for and not divert ourselves across a whole wide range of issues and things that we believe are adding value but are actually diluting and really limiting the power of what you have. I've once you know, heard a, a, an MD say to me, you know what, Mike, we've, our, our, we're, we could put a credit card between us and our major, major competitors. Mm. No one wants to be in that position. Yeah. And the world's full of similar people doing similar things and expecting pretty similar results. Most entrepreneurs really don't want to be in that space. Yeah. They want to create something special and they want something that they can own that they believe in and actually fires them up every day. Yeah. It's, it's the reason to get up in the morning. And when you've got staff, of course, the reason why they get up in the morning too. So I hate the word buying into and I've never subscribed to it. Lots of people say, oh, um, I really got to get my staff to buy into that. I, I've, I, I don't buy into that statement. I don't like the phrase. People have got to want to be there, to be energized, to be excited about the vision of the business. And that's why I can't stress enough bringing your people in to that at a very, very early stage at the initial workshop, um, in values creation, all of those things. Really, really important. Yeah. So the brand and the core values and, as you say, the, the mission and the vision and all of that stuff yes. just needs to tie together for the same yes. ultimate result. And it starts with the core essence. It then goes into building the values building, creating the value proposition, looking at brand vocabulary, tone of voice. It's in some ways very prescriptive, but actually what you end up with is a robust and strategically led program that actually comes from that initial spark. And it is, is a spark. Yeah. We're talking about something that ignites your brand, illuminates your points of difference. That's, what's, that's why we get up every morning yeah. to, in order to do that. And that's, that's effectively why Clients who have a cause are really powerfully behind it and their customers feel it. Yeah, love that. Okay, we've got to go to a break. Sure. Um, I, I, I want to dig into this a little bit more, um, but uh, as I say, we just need to go to the advert, so don't go away. Okay, welcome back. So I'm here with Mike Symes and we're just starting to dig into what brand really means. Um, I wanted to also just touch on the point of, at the moment, um, there's quite uncertain times based mm. around, uh, certainly in the UK, based around our sort of economic future. Mm. Um, and that leads a lot of entrepreneurs and, and small to medium enterprises sort of maybe procrastinating over mm. certain decisions. Um, how do you think uh, that affects brand and how can brand help with that sort of stuff? Mm. Well, I was Seth, Seth Godin actually came out with a great comment um, associated with that was, was that being safe right now is probably the riskiest thing you could do. 
So it's really a case of having the courage of your convictions and, and investing in brand. I know the media has painted this picture, and rightly so, of a, an environment that is known as VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Um, but what we're looking to um, create in terms of a brand is real certainty that people not only have a banner to follow behind, but actually it's, it's certain. And there's a way to create certainty with a brand that is, is really worth exploring as entrepreneurs. And that is to think about, we, we, we call it the four R's, and that is that whatever we create, and this sounds like a blinding glimpse of the obvious perhaps, but whatever we create, it has relevance about it to your target audience, to your specific target audience, that it is remarkable um, that goes back to Seth Godin's purple cow concept. You know, the, um, seeing a purple cow in a field of black and white cows is not only noticed, it is remarkable, it's remarked upon, because mm -hmm. it's not something you can, could ignore. Um, so it's beyond impact. People start talking about it, and there's a, a social media viral element to, to, to that inevitably. Um, and also that it's reputational, that you're effectively building a reputation in the market. You're conveying some form of esteem that not only you can be proud of, but your customers as your advocates and ambassadors can also feel that they really want to talk to other people about it. And last but certainly not least, it needs to be real, that it is completely authentic, that everything that you say and do is something that you would naturally do. It becomes something that you completely embody as an individual, as a collection of individuals, and as an overall corporate body as such, so that you are effectively creating something that is rightly and authentically you. Um, in terms of the business. And everybody within it needs to be also authentic and, and to create something of value, you need to be able to put something into the world that actually has a reality about it. Mm. The interesting thing about millennial audiences now uh, coming into the market and consuming content is of course, they've been trained from the earliest age possible to spot a fake. Mm. And Effectively, if we all thought like that about the marketplace and we all had that authenticity, it's a great place to be. Yeah. And if you've got all four of those things in perfect balance, then you really do have a confident brand that can go forward with real courage into today's market with all of its political, economic and legal change that's happening everywhere. Um, the, the real antidote to prevarication is massive action now. But if you can make that around that core brand essence and living it with real authenticity, then you're really onto something. Yeah. Do you, do you think that, um, uh, as we said at the beginning, many companies, they create a product um, that they've seen other people do and they think, you know, oh, we could do this better. Mm. Um, but uh, they perhaps fail to nail down their why. Um, I know before the show started, we were talking specifically about estate agency, for instance. Yes. Um, and many of many yeah. of my clients are estate agents, and they talk about mm. how mm. what they do is they sell and let houses for people, but it's not very specific because someone might be watching this thinking like, you know, that sounds perfect. The four R's, the the uh, really having a purpose, mm. but then struggle to how do I come up with it? All that's going through their head is I. I sell and let houses for people. How do you get people past that block in their mind of just the service? I think it's taking the time out and spending time on the business as well as in the business. I think we're all very busy as entrepreneurs. Um, I think every single business owner feels that they're there to service the clients and absolutely everything else is secondary and to an extent that's absolutely right. But spending some time thinking about what do my customers perceive me to be right now or perceive us to be right now? What do um, our partners think of us within the business and externally to the business? And actually start to define things. Because one of the things about a market is it will define you unless you define yourself. Um, you take an accountancy firm, for example, um, People will pigeonhole accountants in different fields. Oh, they're a tax accountant. They're a firm of auditors. What do you actually set out your stall to be and have that courage of your conviction and say, and this is what it's all about? Effectively, we're not just saying, 
you're an accountant, you're an estate agent, purely being defined by what you do. It's about who you are and what you're bringing into the world. Those are the things that really make a difference. Those are the things that actually become exciting because actually no client wants to work with a Me Too organisation. There are lots of what we call A organisations around or an organisations around. I'm an accountant, I'm an estate agent. How do you become the estate agent in your borough? How do you become the accountant in your particular field or discipline that you're working in as well as the region in which you operate? Yeah. How do you become the rather than a or an? Yeah. And that's the challenge that everybody faces. The answer is actually staring you in the face in terms of brand. It's having a market share, but only market share in the market that you actually want. You know, Absolutely. It's too vast, isn't it, to say we sell and let houses. This is so vast. How yes. do you do any marketing? Yeah, and actually nailing your criteria is another thing. And, and again, this is a message for entrepreneurs who tend to grab onto lots of opportunities. And they may not be the right opportunities for you. Yeah. They may be things that actually you either don't actually have the capacity to do or the capability to do. And then you're searching for that solution somewhere else. And I'm not suggesting that you close the doors to new opportunities, but actually do focus and do have a very set criteria in terms of the types of people that you want to be working with, the types of businesses you want to be working with, and most importantly, what you want to be putting out into the world. Yeah. And does your client expectation or the type of client that you're bringing on board are they right for that mission that you have? Yeah, do they want that, so that particular service or, or whatever it is you're offering? I mean, we certainly found the same, mm. the same thing helped us when we nailed down the fact that we were trying to modernise a state agency. Mm. Um, although we did have the capacity, because we have designers and, and that sort of stuff, we did have the capacity to, say, create new letterheads for mm. somebody. Mm. It hardly fits in with the value of modernising the industry, does mm. it? So it's just a distraction. Yes. Um, and I guess what you're saying is like many, many companies find themselves on that road of, of distraction mm. until there's a clear, you know, there's a clear path that they're trying to follow. And, and a clear path is a, a, a very good analogy, actually, because what we're looking at is not just a, a brand in terms of an identity, not even just the cause, but actually how does it manifest itself in the customer journey? Yeah. How do you map every single stage of that journey and inject some moments of delight within that? Yeah things that people aren't necessarily expecting yeah. from you or from your industry. And that's where the magic happens, that you're starting to base your customer journey on something that is cause-based, that it is a purpose, yeah. a sense of purpose. And, you know, people talk about core essences, they talk about um, having a brand, living a brand, all of those things. Put it down, put it down pure and simply to what is your purpose and what you're putting into the world. That is the, the difference between an organisation that actually will attract higher revenues, higher profitability, as opposed to one that's purely going for a fiscal target. I'm not saying don't have targets. Yeah. Of course, we all have targets as business people. But make sure that it's aligned fully to that pathway that you're taking your customers upon. Do you think it's a good idea to decide that as a business owner yourself and then discuss it with the team or do you think it should be a thing whereby the team discuss it and everybody comes up with the solutions on how that could uh, become realised? The more collegiate you can be I think about it as a business owner the better that everybody is effectively brought in to create the vision and values of, of the business it's not purely the business owner's um, remit and I think part of leadership is to be collegiate, bring everybody on side and actually create something that everybody feels a part of and has contributed to. And we've got some great examples of that. We've conducted a, a workshop recently in creating uh, values for 300 people at one, one session um, and uh, we used um, electronic voting to effectively decide upon the values that they, they created. And then we asked people within the audience to effectively say, well, how are you going to live this particular value? Now you had that with real life client situations. And to be able to explore that, first of all, it's an enormous privilege for us to be able to do it. But also from the client perspective, it gives several things. It gives real transparency 
and it gives fantastic ownership from everybody that's participating. That's brilliant. Look, I, we could talk all day, um, but uh, we've run out of time. I um, hope, hope that was enjoyable for you. Very it's, much so. Thank hope you. for the viewers you got something out of it. And um, we'll see you next time on Raising Your Game.